Zion. Nita Awado says this well, then, is no, no, we we want we want to be in um uh, um in base yud. But that's the your nita is is the is oh, yeah, the, 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 all right base yud. Okay, here we go. They teach they each said three things. Rabbi Elias says that their fellows are to be as dear to you as your own, and do not anger easily, and repent one day before your death. Uh, uh, warm yourself opposite the fire of the sages, but beware of the glowing coal, lest you be a scorch, for their bite is the bite of a fox, and the sting is the sting of a scorpion, and their hiss is the hiss of a serpent, and all their words are like fiery coals. Yeshua says, an evil eye, the evil inclination, the hatred of other people remove a person from the world. The Yossi says, let your fellow's money be as dear to you as your own. Apply yourself to study the Torah, for it is not yours by inheritance, and let all your deeds be for the sake of heaven. Right. And that's actually a very important point, is that Torah is not an inheritance. I mean, it, it is a, we, we say, Morasha ki las Yaakov, Torah uh, uh, Moshe, Morasha ki las Yaakov. It's something that we are entitled to. But it's not yours automatically, like you know, the Yerusha of, of your father's estate. It, yeah. it, Torah is something that you've got to earn yourself. Yeah. Okay, Rabbi Shimon Omer. So this is not the our regu Rabbi, regular Rabbi Shimon. He's he state normally when we state Rabbi Shimon by himself, it's that's uh, that's Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. But this is uh, this is over here Rabbi Shimon, um, the the Talmud of um, of Rabbi uh, of Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai. This is um, Rabbi Shimon ben Nisanel. Ben Nisanel, right? So it's Rabbi Shimon ben Rabbi Shimon ben Nisanel. Okay, um, and he says, "Hevei zahir bekriyas shema v'tfila." Be very careful about saying shema and tfila. Uh, okay, kashia tamit palel. And when you do daven, al tas tivilas hakavah. Don't make it a rote thing. Ela rachamim v'sach nunim lifnei hamakom baruchu. So it's a that's a you know. It's an excellent exhortation and one of those things that is almost it, it's so difficult to follow because it you know it becomes uh, you know routine in your in your mouth you you know the words you know what comes next and your your mind can drift off into all sorts of directions um, and he's here to say don't do that pull yourself back together be present and and mean what you say to Hashem. Um, ki chanun verachum hu erech apayim verav chesed v'nicham alara. Um, this is uh, in 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 from from Yoel. Why does he choose this particular pasuk from Yoel um, to to prove his point? Um, and because the, the, the this this particular thing is it has three has uh, three aspects to it. One that Hashem will save a person from from tzaros um, Okay, and and um, even even though the person has sinned, he Hashem has 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 patience for him and and won't punish him immediately. Secondly, she that the person that, that Hashem will do good things to a person and will fulfill what what he wants, um, even when his uh, when he doesn't deserve it. And the third thing that this passage brings out is that Hashem pardons a person for his sins, and. Uh, and withholds from the uh, from, from the evil that that is uh, fitting for him, uh, to to punish him with. Um, and but this only this only works when a person when a person's tefillah uh, is uh, comes from uh, comes from a, a space of sincerity, and um, rather than rather than just wrote saying the words. Anyway, but altihi rasha bifnei atzmach. And he says, don't ever be um, evil in your own eyes. Lots to unpack in that little statement. Um, how many ways there are to interpret this? Don't, don't do something that would make yourself appear evil, or even that a person should never despair of himself, because that's another one of the tactics. And this is my favorite interpretation of this, is one of the favorite tactics of the Yetzirah is to say to a person, you're gone. You're already, you're already so bad. You know, why, 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 bother, why bother trying to fix yourself? You're, you're already gone. Just... You know, do what do what you do what you want. So don't make yourself a Russia. You never give up on yourself. You 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 can always pick yourself up and and improve. Rabbi Elazar Omer have a shakud lil mod Torah. He says be uh, be very diligent in in learning Torah. Vada mashit and you should know 
what to reply to an apicorus to to uh, to somebody who comes and uh, and argues against uh, against Torah. You've got to you've got to have an answer, otherwise uh, you may be swayed by him. Uh, and uh, and know before whom you are you are laboring. Why? And don't worry, Hashem, the, the, your your boss. Your boss is uh, is reliable. He will pay you your reward. It's interesting to see that uh, you know. On the one hand, here we've got uh, Rabbi Elazar saying that uh, you know, don't worry, Hashem will pay your reward. And previously, we've learned don't uh, serve Hashem like servants are expecting a reward. But sometimes, you know, you just got to that you need to have that incentive to say, okay, why am I not doing this avera? Why am I doing this mitzvah? It's like, okay. What's going to get me up is because think of my ulama ba. What's my ulama ba going to be? So sometimes you just got to do that. And now Mishnah Tesvav, we do a, a big jump. Um, we we now up until now everything has been sort of in in sequential order of uh, of who said what. We're now jumping to Rabbi Tarfon, who is um, who's a contemporary of Rabbi Akiva. And it's uh, we're not we're not uh, we're not following the and, and from here on, the, the the statements of the of the of the Mishnah just kind of jump from one person to another, and it's going to be more more grouped by subject. And what's the relevance of Rabbi Tarfon? Because he's going to be talking about reward, as uh, Rabbi Elazar uh, Ben Arach just said, um, the uh, that Hashem is uh, it can be relied on to pay your reward. Here comes Rabbi Tarfon talking on that subject. Hayom Katsar, the day is short, la Malacha Maruba, and there's a lot of work to do. Of course, you understand the analogy over here. He's speaking metaphorically um, mm. of, uh, of life that you it's a it's a short day and there's a lot of work to do. But poorly matzelim and the workers are lazy. Yeah. But there's a lot of reward out there. And the and the employer is pushing, saying do do more do more. And that's uh, and that's his uh, that's his view on on life, which is uh, uh, there's. There's not much time and there's a lot of work to do. Okay. Right. Now we can go back to Nittai Harbel. Nittai of Arbel says, distance yourself from a bad neighbor. Do not associate with a wicked person and do not disregard the possibility of retribution. Yehuda ben Tavai and Shimon ben Shatak receive the Abimasura from them. Yehuda, Yehuda ben Tavai says, do not make yourself like the legal counselors. And when litigants stand before you or for judgment, they should stand both as guilty in your eyes. But when they depart from before you after judgment, they should both be as virtuous in your eyes, since once once they have accepted the verdict on themselves. Shimon ben Shadrach says, interrogate witnesses extensively, but be cautious, be, uh, be cautious uh, with your words, lest they learn from them to lie. Okay. Adios. Okay. So we're in the subject of um, the coolers of Beis Shama and the Chumras of Beis Hillel. I think I think just just if you didn't do anything else, if you just learn Avos over and over again, you gain so much from that. Just you know, mm -hmm. it's not it's not technical like you know much of the Mishnah is. You know, in terms yeah. of you know, yeah, but it's all, it's all Musa, and and sometimes they're contradictory bits of Musa inside there <laughs> because it's all it's it, none, none of Avos is the halacha. Right, it's, right, right. It's you know giving you advice for life, but uh, some, some of it some some time you know contradict each other in, yeah. inside of us. I find it very good. But there, there's what to learn from all of them. The fourth he approaches of a vineyard. Maid Shammai says it is a subject matter to the law of the fifth, nor to the law of removal. But Hill says it is subject to the law of the fifth and to the law of removal. Maid Shammai says it is a fourth year product. Uh, produce of sub is subject to the laws of uh, parrot and oleos, and the poor people must redeem it for themselves. But Basil says all of it goes to the owner's wine press. A barrel of olives pickling in salt. Basil said that it does not have to perfor uh, perforate it, but Basil said that it doesn't. It it does have to perforate it. However, Basil agreed that if you want to perforate the barrel and sediment from the olives blocked it, it is tahu. If one anointed himself with tar oil and then became tummy and then went down into a mikvah and immersed himself, Beisamai says, even if it's still dripping with oil after the immersion, it is tahor. He is tahor. But Ethelo says, enough oil on the person to anoint a small limb. But if the oil was tummy from the start, Beisamai said, enough oil on the person to anoint a small limb. 
And Beis Hillel says liquid that moistens. Rev. Yehuda says in the name of Beis Hillel, it makes moist enough to moisten something else. A woman having child with a dinner no, it's something worth a dinner according to the view of Beis Shammai. But Beis Hillel says with a pruta or something worth a pruta. And how much is a pruta worth? One eighth of an Italian isn't. Beis Shammai says one may divorce his wife by giving her an old get, but Beis Hillel prohibits this. What is an old gate? Get. Anytime he secludes himself with her after he wrote the get for her. One who divorces his wife and then she lodges with him in an inn, Ben Shammai says she does not need a second get from him, but Ben Hillel says she does need a second get from him. When? When she was divorced from her new Nisuin. But if she was divorced from Arison, they agree that she does not need a second get from him because he does not feel at ease with her. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If two witnesses testified on his behalf that he ate his produce three years and they were found to be Zoamin, they pay him everything. If two testify concerning the first year, two concerning the second year, and two concerning the third year, they divide it three, the three among them. If they were three brothers and one joined with them, these are the three testimonies, but the one testimony in regard to Azmana, Az 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 no, that's right, Azmana. There are circumstances for which there is a Chazaka, and there are circumstances for which there is no Chazaka. If he kept an animal in the courtyard or an oven, a stove or a mill, and he raised chickens or places manure in the courtyard, he is, it is not a kazaka. However, if he made a partition to him if I'm high for his animal, or he did so for an oven, stove, or mill, for he placed chickens in the house, or he made a storage place for manure, three pen uh, to fuck him high or three pen to fuck him deep, this is a kazaka. A drain spout has no kazaka, but its place has a kazaka. But an agata has a kazaka. An Egyptian ladder has no kazaka, but a Tyrian ladder has a kazaka. An Egyptian window has no kazaka, but a Tyrian window has a kazaka. What is the Egyptian window? Any window through which a man's head cannot enter. The Yehuda says if it has a frame, even though a man's head cannot enter it, it establishes a kazaka. A protrusion down to the handbreadth, it has a kazaka, and one can protest its placement. But if it has less than a handbreadth, it has no kazaka, and one cannot protest its placement. Okay. All right. Ramos. Uh, you're down. A man whose wife went overseas and they came and told you your wife died and he married her sister. And afterwards, his wife reappeared. She may return to him. He is permitted to marry the relatives of the second woman. The second woman is permitted to marry his relatives. And if the first woman dies, he is permitted to marry the second. If they told him your wife is your wife died and she married her sister and he married her sister and afterward they told him she was alive then but now she is but now is dead the child that born before him before is a mamza but not the child born after. Then Yossi says anyone who disqualifies for others disqualifies for himself and anyone who does not disqualify others do not disqualify for himself. If they told him your wife died and he married her paternal sister and then they said to him she died. And he married her maternal sister, and then they told him she died. They married her paternal sister, and then they told him she died, and he married her maternal sister. And then it was discovered that they are all alive. He is permitted to the first, third, and fifth, and they released their co wives. But he is permitted, prohibited to the second and fourth, and cohabitation with either of them does not release a co wife. However, if he cohabitated with the second after the first one's death, he is permitted to the second one and fourth, and they released their co wives. But he's prohibited to the third and fifth, and cohabitates with either of them does not release her co-wife. A boy, nine years and one day old, disqualifies the Yavama for the brothers, and the brothers disqualify her for him. However, he disqualifies her only at the beginning, whereas the brothers disqualify her both at the beginning and at the end. How so? A boy, nine years and one day old, who cohabitated with his Yavama, disqualifies her for the brothers. If any other brothers cohabitated with her before Mama and then divorced her or permitted to perform Kalitza with her, they disqualified her for him. Okay. Done. Okay, she leaves. Onions on which rain has fallen and which they have sprouted, if their leaves are black, they are forbidden. If they became green, they are permitted. The Chanina Ben Antigono says if they can be pulled out by the leaves, they are forbidden, like those of the uh, like those in the eighth year are permitted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, wait, just uh, sorry. 
Something's gone wrong here. Wait. Did I do something wrong? Yeah, I think so. Just uh, so I, can you can you just go back to the beginning of Gimel and read it again? Are you are you moving in the right direction? Because I know you're saying yeah, yeah. in the opposite direction. <laughs> what makes you what makes you say that? Onions are on which rain has fallen and on which onions. Hold on, hold on. Are you in Mishnah Gimel? I'm in Gimel. Zion Gimel. Zion Gimel. Yeah. Oh no no no. That's Zion Gimel. Hey, now I'm in Zion Gimel. Sorry. Okay. Hucks, uh, husks and blossoms of the pomegranate, correct? Yep. Okay. Shells of nuts and the kernels, the seventh year applies to them and to their proceeds. The, the, the dyer may die for himself and not may die for payment, because one may not trade with the seventh year produce or with firstborn or with trumas or with carrion or with terefa, um, terefa or with reptiles, but with, or with creeping things. And one may not buy field vegetables and sell them in the market, but one may gather them and the sun sells them for him. If he took for himself and some was left over, he may sell them. If one bought a first one for his son's feast or for a pilgrimage festival and he does not need it, he may sell it. Hunters of wild animals, birds, and fish who chance upon unclean species may sell them. Maybe Yehuda says that also if anyone chance upon it, he may take it and sell it, provided this is not that this is not his trade, but the government forbid it. Young sprouts of the service tree and the carob tree, the seventh year applies to them and to the proceeds. Bear applies to them and to the proceeds. You love them on the terebinth, of the pistachio tree and the white thorn, the seventh year applies to them and to their proceeds, but beer does not apply to them or to their proceeds, and beer applies to the leaves as soon as they fall off their stem. The rose cypress. That's three, yeah? That was three? I think so. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yes. Okay. Elim Chafav Tess. Regarding a hide that is Tame Midras, and one decided to use it for straps or the sandals, as soon as he applied the knife to it, it is Tahor. These are the words of Rabbi Yehuda, but the sages say until it reduces it to no less than five handbreadths. But Elazar, the son of Sidralik, says even if one makes a napkin from a hide, it remains Tame, and from a mattress, it is Tahor. Cloth, in contact, cloth can contact contract tumor in five categories. Sack can contract tumor in four categories. Hide can contract tumor in three categories. Wood can contract tumor in two categories. And earthenware uh, can contract tumor in one category. Earthenware is susceptible to tumor at a receptacle. Any earthenware until that, uh, until any earthenware utensil that has no interior has no exterior. Wood exceeds earthenware and that wood is subject to tumor as a seat. Similarly, regarding a tray that has no rims, if, it's a wood, if it is a wooden utensil, it is susceptible to tumor, but it is not earthenware. If, if, but if it is an earthenware utensil, it is tahor. Hide exceeds wood in that hide is subject to roof tumor. Sack exceeds hide in that the sack is subject to tumor as a woven article. And cloth exceeds sack in that the cloth is subject to tumor when it measures three, uh, three uh, finger breads by three finger breads. Cloth can contact, contact midrash tumor if it measures three hand and um, and three tefakim by three tefakim, and it can contract coarse tumor if it measures three tefakim by three tefakim. Sack can contact, contact contract tumor if it measures uh, four tefakim by four tefakim, and hide can contract tumor if it is measured five tefakim by five tefakim, and mat can contract tumor if it measures six tefakim by six tefakim, and this measure applies equally to midrash tumor as the corpse tumor. But Mayor says regarding sack, its remnants can contract tumor if they are measured for the fucking by a nib, but initially a contract tumor when it has been completed. Okay. If one may <laughs> that was it. Oh. Okay. And we're done. Okay. Have a great Shabbos. Too. Good Shabbos. Good moid. All right. You come to early Shabbos again today? Um, considering it, might see you at Hatzikon uh, Moshe. I think it's, is it 529 today? Not sure. 